Good morning, Year 4. I'm going to read you now um, from one of my favourite stories I sometimes read in Year 4. Um, and I know some of you might have, have heard of this book. And I know, I think some of you might have even read it, but I'm going to read you Chapter 1 and 2 of this book here, Varjak Paul. So I'm going to share my screen with you now so you can see some of the pictures as I read along. Okay, Valjack Poor by S.F. Said. The elder Poor was telling a story. It was a Jalal tale, one of the best. Valjack loved to hear his grandfather's tales of their famous ancestor, how a Jalal fought the fiercest warrior cats, how he was the mightiest hunter, how he came out of Mesopotamia and travelled to the ends of the earth further than any cat had ever been before. But today, the elder Paul's tale just made Varjak restless. So what if Jalal had such exciting adventures? Varjak never would. Jalal had ended his days in the Contessa's house. His family of Mesopotamian blues had stayed here ever since. The old place must have been full of light and life in Jalal's time generations ago. But now it was full of dusty, musty smells. The windows were always closed, the doors locked. There was a garden, but it was surrounded by a high stone wall. Jalal was the last to cross it. In all the years since then, no one had ever left the Contessa's house. Now, no one except Varjak was listening to the tale of Jalal's adventures. Father, mother and Aunt Junie were dozing in the late afternoon light that trickled through the thick green windows. His big brother, Julius, was flexing his muscles. His cousin, Jasmine, was fiddling with her collar. His little brothers, Jay, Jethro and Jerome, were playing one of those kidnish games that Varjak would never see the point of and wasn't allowed to join in anyway. No one was looking at him. This was his chance. He'd been in the garden before, but the family didn't like it out there and never let him stay out there for very long. Stealthily, as Jalal himself, Varjak rose up and padded to the cat door. He could see the garden on the other side. He could almost feel the fresh air brushing through his whiskers. He nudged it open. Varjak Paul, it was father. Where do you think you're going? Varjak spun around. The tale was over. They'd woken up and seen him. But this time he wouldn't give in. Aren't we allowed in the garden now? He said. Sweetheart, said mother, coming over and straightening his collar. The garden's a nasty, dirty place. You're a pedigreed cat, a pure breed, Mesopotamian blue. What do you want to go out there for? Varjak looked around at the stuffy furniture, the locked up cupboards, the curtain he wasn't allowed to climb. He'd never been anywhere else, but this had to be the most boring place on earth. Hunting, he said. Aren't we supposed to hunt? The tales talk about it. Tales, snorted his big brother Julius, green eyes glinting. It was said that ancestor Jalal had green eyes. Everyone in the family had them, everyone but Varjak Poor. Tales of the kittens, scoffed Julius. Cousin Jasmine giggled. Varjak bristled. Jalal was a long time ago, said mother, smoothing and grooming Varjak's silver blue fur until he wriggled away. Anyway, Jalal came to live in the Contessa's house for a good reason. The tales also say that there are monsters outside, huge monsters called dogs so fierce that even people fear them. She shuddered. No, we're lucky that the Contessa loves us and lets us live here. The Contessa loves some of us, interrupted Julius. Varjak knew it was coming, and worse, he thought it might be true. When I was a kitten, boasted Julius, the Contessa was down here every day. She used to let me play on her lap. She made a fuss of me, but now she only ever comes down to feed us, and sometimes she doesn't even do that. In fact, we've hardly seen her at all recently. Not since that funny Varjak was born. Cousin Jasmine giggled. This time Varjak's little brother Jay, Jethro and Jerome joined in. It's because of his eyes, added Julius. The colour of danger and Mesopotamian blue's eyes aren't green. It's an embarrassment. That did it. Julius was bigger than him and older, but Varjak couldn't help it. He faced up to Julius, his fur rising with anger. I don't believe you, he said. You're a liar. Varjak, said father. There's no way to talk to your brother. But Varjak... But Julius said, wine, 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 sneered Julius. Little, to listen to the little insect whine. 
Julius, you shouldn't tease him so much, said father. The Countess is upstairs because she's ill, nothing more. But Varjak, you must learn to behave like a proper Mesopotamian blue. We're noble cats, special cats. We don't run around calling each other liars. We don't talk about disgusting things like hunting. And we don't get our pur 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 paws all muddy in the garden. That's not what blue is about. being a blue is about. Do you understand? Varjak's, cur Varjak's tail curled up. It was always like this. Julius could get away with anything, but everything Varjak did was wrong. Your father's talking to you, said Aunt Junie sternly. Do you understand? He stared down at the stared down at the cold stone floor, silent. There was nothing he could say. Fine, said father, suit yourself. But until you learn to act like a blue, there'll be no supper for you. He licked his chops. Come on, everyone, let's eat. And they all headed down the corridor to the kitchen, leaving Varjak on his own in the hallway between the stairs and the front door. Last to go was the elder poor, the leader of the family. Don't worry, Varjak, he whispered so no one else could hear. I'll tell you another Jalal tale tonight, one of his, about his greatest battle. He winked and then joined the rest of them. It made things a little better, even if the tales made Varjak restless. He did love them. They were the closest he ever got to adventure in this place. He looked at the cold, old wooden stairs covered in dusty carpet. The cats weren't allowed up there now that the Contessa was ill. Her door was always shut. The whole house was like that. No one ever came in and no one ever went out. Nothing new or exciting ever happened. It was the dullest life a cat could have. Creak. The front door swung open. A blast of wind swirled in, sweeping all the dust into the air. Varjak's paw fur stood on end. Click, clack, two shiny black shoes, each big as a cat, coming in through the door. Heart racing, Varjak bent back his head to follow the line above the shoes. Up a pair of legs, up some more, he saw huge white hands, huge enough to hold his whole body, strong enough to break his neck. He had to crane even further till it hurt to see the face. It was a man Varjak had never seen before. It was hard to make out the man's eyes with the shadow of his brow, but his full pink lips glistened wetly in the half light. The lips creased and opened and out came a voice that rumbled like thunder. Far above Varjak's head, the man strode into the hallway. Varjak felt dizzy. He looked down. By the man's shiny black shoes, there were two sleek black cats stalking into the Contessa's house. They were nothing like the Mesopotamian blues. They looked much more, much larger and stronger, even than Father than, or Julius. And there was something frightening about the way they moved, as if there were two parts of one body working together perfectly, too perfect. Varjak glanced from one to the other and couldn't tell them apart. They came right up to him and looked down at him with identical eyes, eyes as smooth and black as their fur. He trembled. Who are you? He said. There was no flicker of understanding in their eyes, no expression, nothing. They just pushed past him and pushed aside as if he wasn't even there and took up positions flanking the stairs. And now other men came into the house. Their shiny black shoes clicked past um, Varjak one by one by one. It was all he could see of them. Frozen to the spot, mind spinning, he watched these giants pass the cats, climb the stairs and enter the room where the blues were not allowed to go. What should he do? Things like this didn't happen in the Contessa's house. Tell the family? They'd know what to do. Varjak rushed down the corridor. He could feel two pairs of identical black eyes watching him, but the cats didn't follow. They stayed by the stairs, guarding the way up. Fear and confusion scorched through Varjak's veins as he turned the corner. He raced the kitchen fast as he could go, faster still. Who were these cats? Who were these men? What did they want? He skidded to a halt by the kitchen, hesitating by the doorway. Everything seemed so normal. The whole family was in there. They were eating supper, munching and crunching from rows of china bowls and neat and regular bowls of food, bowls of water, round white saucers of full cream. He felt like a stranger watching from a distance. They looked so grand with their perfectly groomed silver blue fur, their green eyes and their tidy little collars around their necks. So you're ready to behave like a proper blue, said father. Very good. Have you washed your paws, said mother. There are cats, shouted Varjak. There are black cats in the house and they... Varjak, said mother. And they came with a man. Varjak, said father. And he's gone up to the Contessa's room. 
There was silence in the kitchen. The munching and crunching stopped. They all watched him, one great green accusing eye. I just don't understand, Dim, muttered father. Why can't he be like everyone else? You haven't washed your paws, have you, sweetheart, said mother. She came over and started scrubbing. Farjack bit his tongue. No one believed a word, he said. It wasn't fair. In the middle of his family, he felt friendless and alone. Come and eat with us, Farjack, said cousin Jasmine. The food's ever so nice. Jasmine's voice was cool and smooth, the milk in the morning. I don't want to eat, he tried to explain. There are black cats in the house. Oh, who cares what the little insect does, said Julius. I'll have Varjak's food. You'll have to eat to build up your muscles. Julius puffed himself up and tucked into Varjak's bowl. Jasmine looked impressed. Do you hear that, Varjak, said father proudly. Julius is a proper Mesopotamian blue. Varjak bristled. Julius might be the family hero, but Varjak knew something. No one else did. Something important. How could he make them believe him? On Jalal's name, I swear it's true, he insisted. The cats are guarding the stairs right now. I looked into their eyes. He shivered at the memory. They're all black. Enough, enough, yelled father. That's enough of these tales. He spat out the world tales with particular disgust. Ah, but some tales are true, said the elder poor quietly. Why don't you show us, Barjack? Take us to the cats. Father scowled at the elder poor, but kept quiet. The head of the family always has the final say. Varjak's grandfather was getting old. His fine fur was almost all silver and he seldom spoke up these days, but everyone listened when he did. Stomach knotted with nerves, Varjak left and led them down the corridor. He turned the corner into the hallway just in time to glimpse a blur of movement by the front door. The first man was holding it open for the others. They were carrying something away. Down by their shoes, two black tails swished out of the house. The man shut the door as the rest of Varjak's family entered the hallway. They hadn't seen the others or the black cats. All they could see was the man. Why, it's a gentleman, said mother. I remember when we were kittens, said Aunt Junie. There were ladies and gentlemen here every day. The Contessa always had visitors. They looked up the stairs. The Contessa's door was wide open. There was no one in her room. It was empty. Surprise rippled around the family. Not knowing what to think, they peered up at the gentleman, all except the elder poor, who seemed thoughtful, as if he was trying to remember something. The gentleman pointed up at the Contessa's room and said something in his voice that sounded like thunder, high above their heads. Then he crouched down, bringing himself close to their level. His wet pink lips smiled at each of them in turn. Varjak glanced nervously at the front door. The black cats hadn't come back. He hoped they wouldn't. With a flourish, the gentleman brought something out of his pocket. He held it out on his waxy white hand and murmured to the family. Curious, they edged a little closer to see what it was. A toy mouse. A small, grey, furry thing. It was perfect in every way, so precisely detailed it could almost be alive. The gentleman placed it on the floor in front of them. Varjak sniffed the mouse. It smelled real. A tingle of wonder ran through him. He'd always wanted to hunt a mouse. Let me see that, said father. He examined the toy. <laughs> Amazing, he purred, and batted it to Julius. Julius flipped it stylishly through the air, to Jay, to Jethro, to Jerome. They giggled. Barjack wondered if he'd get it back. <laughs> Probably not. What a beautiful toy, said mother. It's the best present we've ever had, cooed Jasmine. The gentleman smiled and stood up in his full height. He waved at them to follow as his shiny black shoes went clicking through the kitchen. Jay, Jethro and Jerome raced to be the first beside him. Come on, said father. Let's see what he's going to do next. In the kitchen, the gentleman was spooning something into their bowls. It was an oily black paste with a sharp, fishy smell. Varjak's nose wrinkled at it. Ugh, he said. That's caviar, whispered mother. The rarest, most expensive food in the world. Treats like this are only given to the finest pedigree cats, purred father. The gentleman knows how important we are. The man put the bowls back on the floor, heaped high with fishy food and beamed down at them. His pink lips glistened as the cats started to sniff the caviar. He nodded, turned and left the kitchen, smiling all the way. What was all that fuss about, Varjek, said father, the moment he was gone. And the black cat nonsense. I'm calling a family council, interrupted the elder poor. Now everyone is to attend, even the kittens. But elder poor, protested father, eyeing the bowls of caviar. Family council is only for emergencies. It's now, repeated the elder poor, now in the front room. The elder poor strode away. Varjak glanced anxiously at father's face. It was twisted with speechless rage. Mm, and I believe it there.
I've read chapter one and two. Maybe you've enjoyed that story today. And maybe this is a book that you'd like to read. When you come back to school, this book will be popped onto the, um, the book corner and you can borrow it. Um, and I might read a little bit more of it at some point. Hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to share your reading stories with me. Perhaps you read, read a chapter of something that you're really, really enjoying. Okay, so I look forward to hearing your stories soon.